As we continue on this road of choosing Jesus, it's important to have a little background and to keep it simple. So I'd like us to focus on just one verse in the Bible. It's clear, it's simple, and it's insightful. And I'd like us to concentrate on just 10 words from that verse. It gives us what we really need to understand what's most important. You ready? Here it is. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The first word is wages. We've all had wages before. Maybe you've had a career, a minimum. You've babysat or had some chores that you got paid for. We do the job, we get paid. The wages are what we earn. It's what we deserve. It's what we're owed. When I put in eight hours and I make $10 an hour, I should get $20, right? Did you forget to take out medical insurance, dental, vision insurance, and pay all those taxes? It ends up being about 20 bucks. It's a joke. Let's keep it simple. You work eight hours, you get $10 an hour, you're owed $80. It's your wages. The second major word is sin. A lot of people don't like that word. It's too dark. But sin, sin simply means to miss the mark. Sin is what separates us from God. Sin is more than a mistake. A mistake is something like forgetting to carry the one in a math problem. We're not mistakers. We're sinners. We've all done wrong against God. Maybe it was one of the seven deadly sins. Pride, coveting, lust, anger, gluttony, envy, sloth. I love that last one, sloth. That's not wanting to work or give a real effort. It's also known as laziness. I think almost all of us have been guilty of that at one time or another. Certainly anger or pride or lust. Yeah, we've all sinned. And here's where it gets interesting. What do we deserve because of our sin? What are we owed because of our sin? What are our wages because of our sin? It's the third major word in the verse is death. It's not like we're all going to physically die because of our sin. However, some people in the Old Testament died because of their sin. One time, the earth actually opened up and swallowed a bunch of families because of their sin. For realsies. Deuteronomy 11.5, It was not your children who saw what he did for you in the wilderness until you arrived at this place, and what he did to Dathan and Abram, sons of Ibiab, the Reubenite, when the earth opened its mouth right in the middle of all Israel and swallowed them up with their households, their tents, and every living thing that belonged to them. But it was with your own eyes you saw all these great things the Lord has done. That would have been a crazy brutal death, standing there with your family, among all your tents, and, and then like a cutting-edge paramount motion picture, the ground starts to split, it cracks open like an 8.0 earthquake, and then opens up into a big circle like a well-crafted CG sinkhole, except it's not CG computer graphics, and it's not a motion picture. It's the physical death of your family and destruction of everything that belongs to you, all because of sin. But here in Romans 6, the Bible is talking about an eternal death, an eternal separation from God, and many scholars believe that includes eternal punishment in hell, which isn't a very popular idea today. Many use the reasoning that a loving God would never eternally punish someone in a lake of fire with complete darkness and screaming and groaning. It's quite gruesome. So no matter what you believe, we should listen to what the Bible does clearly say throughout Scripture. It's eternal separation from God. And to be away from the presence of God, even for a day, is hell. And it all started back in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve chose to sin by taking the fruit of that tree. Romans 5, 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. It was in the garden that the choice became real. Choose God or choose the enemy. The wages of our sin is what we're owed. It's eternal death and separation from God. But, and that's the fourth and very important word of the ten we want to look at, thankfully the verse doesn't end with death. It has even more words, like the one gift. We all know what a gift is. It's what we get on our birthday or what we get on Christmas. It's a present. It's not something we've earned. It's not something that we're owed. It's simply a gift. If it's something we got because we did our chores or because we went over the top on something and then got it, that's not a gift. That's a payment from someone. A true gift is just an act of love. It's just an act of undeserved kindness. It's a gift. The sixth word is God. What we know about God is He's the creator of the universe and also that He's perfect. He's holy. He's righteous. He's God. And in contrast, He's the opposite of sin. And when we combine these two words, the gift of God, we see the result of that gift. It's eternal life, words 7 and 8. Forever is a long time that we're going to spend somewhere. And some think that when we die, it's over. That's it. 
lights out, there's nothing more. But the Bible teaches we will go to one of two places, heaven or hell. Now, if you're right and the Bible is wrong, forever will be the same for both of us. Nothing, no harm done. But if the Bible is right and you're wrong, forever will be one of two outcomes for us. Eternity with God or eternally separated from God, which is the equivalent of hell, no matter what you think about a literal hell. Hey, hell might be a great topic for a future video. The gift, which we don't deserve, of God, who is perfect, is eternal life in heaven with Him. But how? It happens in Christ Jesus. That's the last two words. This is how it all comes together. Jesus pays for the wages of our sin through His blood that was shed on that cross some 2,000 years ago. Hebrews 9.22 says, In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. The author of Hebrews is quoting an Old Testament verse because in the Old Testament, the only thing that could forgive sins was blood. And that's why they made all those brutal sacrifices because the shedding of blood was the only thing to forgive the people of their sins. That's kind of the way God set it up. If you don't like that, you'll have to take that up with him later. But in the New Testament, God said Jesus will be the final sacrifice. God's only son would die a horrific death on the cross and shed his blood. And in this way, he would forgive the people of their sins once and for all. Look at this more in-depth description of sacrifices. Hebrews 10.8. First, he said, Sacrifices and offerings, burn offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them when they were offered in accordance with the law. Then he said, here I am, I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The author is quoting an Old Testament psalm about their sacrifices in the past. He's basically saying, that was then, this is now. And those animal sacrifices can't take away a sin, not now. We are now made holy, that is forgiven of our sin by the sacrifice of Jesus, the shedding of his blood. The stuff the priests are doing can never take away sins. The high priest Jesus laid down his own life as a sacrifice, a payment, a wages for our sins. And that's great news. So we see the gift of God is eternal life, and it's found in Jesus Christ. The big question is, are your sins forgiven? Seriously, it's the most important question that you'll ever answer. You need to get it right, without any doubts. 1 John 5.13 says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. If you're ready to put your faith in Jesus as the only payment for what you've earned from your sins, we can help you walk through that. Just click the appropriate button below and let's get the conversation going. Now, you may be hesitant. I understand. That's okay. But remember, this isn't some cult trying to get you to join an organized or disorganized church on the corner of 5th and Main. We're simply trying to help you process what choosing Jesus looks like for you. Like I said, it's the most important decision that you'll ever make. And you can know for sure that you're headed to an eternity with God. Jesus came as an act of love to connect us to our Heavenly Father, but we must choose Him. We don't deserve it. We can't earn it. But because of God's undeserved kindness, this gift of His Son, Jesus, we can have it and know for sure that we'll spend eternity with Him. Click the appropriate button. You'll be glad you started this most important process. Until next time, God bless.